Red Hat OpenShift provides a way to run not only your container-based applications, but also with the help of OpenShift virtualization, your virtual machines as well. A unified Kubernetes cluster such as this allows you to manage one environment that includes both VMs and containers. Many customers are running their virtual machines in an environment like VMware vSphere. So how do you get your workloads moved over to Red Hat OpenShift virtualization? Well, you could rebuild your apps, but my guess is that you'd rebuild them in a container-based solution if you were doing that, and it would take you a while. Or you could use the migration toolkit for virtualization and just move your VMs in place and intact. In this demo, we'll walk through the steps needed to move a MongoDB database running as a virtual machine in VMware vSphere to a virtual machine instance running on OpenShift. To start, let's look at an application that is partially in OpenShift and partially in VMware vSphere. The application is a simple app from a fictional barbecue restaurant and requires a web server for the front end and a database for the back end. As shown in the diagram on the left side, the back end database for our application is running a MongoDB instance of a virtual machine and lives in our vSphere environment. On the right side, we have our web front end for our application and it will connect to our database over the network to store its order data. We also have Portworks deployed in this Kubernetes cluster. If we look in our OpenShift cluster, we can see that we have a deployment with three replicas deployed and they have a node port for a service so we can access the application. Let's access our barbecue application and order up some food to show that the app is working in its current state. We'll order a main dish, some sides, and of course the pork special for our drink. We receive an order number, and we can be sure that this order is stored in our MongoDB database, which is housed on a virtual machine. Now we can switch over to the OpenShift console, where OpenShift virtualization and the migration toolkit have already been installed from Operator Hub. If we look through the virtualization tabs, we can see that there is a catalog of virtual machine options, including both Windows and Linux types. These VMs can be deployed from the catalog if you wish, but again, for this demo, we'll be importing a virtual machine from VMware vSphere. In the Virtual Machine tab, you can see any instances that are currently running. Then you can drill down into those instances to get more information about their configuration and, of course, access the console. But enough of the tour, let's import a VM. Prior to recording this video, we set up several things. A provider for virtualization, which is where we set up configuration information for our vSphere environment so that the migration toolkit can authenticate to vCenter and list the resources. You can see we have one set up already, and if we search for our Mongo VM, we can see that it exists. Next, we show network maps. This is a mapping definition that explains how we move workloads from a vSphere virtual network to the networks configured in the OpenShift cluster. And of course, we do the same thing for storage, where we map a vSphere data store to a Kubernetes storage class in OpenShift. For our demo, we'll be using a Portworx storage class backed by Portworx Enterprise. The last step for migration is to build and execute a plan. Let's do this now. From the Plans for Virtualization tab, we'll click Create Plan. After giving it the required names and descriptions, you'll select the provider from the previously created providers and the target provider, which is OpenShift. Then we'll select the namespace to store the new virtual machine, and for our case, we're going to place it in a PXBBQ namespace along with the already running web applications. Then we select the VM we want to move from vSphere, we find our Mongo VM and click Next. Then we select both the network mapping that we created before the video and the storage mapping to define what storage class the VM should use on OpenShift. We get to choose whether we do this as a cold migration, which means the replication happens when the VM is powered off, or you can take periodic snapshots of a running VM and do a warm failover. In both cases, the VM will need to be powered down for the failover of the operation. 
When we click finish, our plan has been created and we can run it during our maintenance window. To do that, just click the start button on the plan. You'll see the data about the migration status and the data being copied. I've sped up the video here, but the whole process for a 20 gigabyte virtual machine took less than 10 minutes. Then from our virtual machine console, we can see the additional VM listed for our Mongo database. Just like the VMs created from OpenShift virtualization, the migrated VM can be managed from the console here as well. If we check the command line, we can see that we have a VMI instance in our PX Barbecue namespace, and that VM has a tag of app equals Mongo. We can use this to create a Kubernetes service which finds our VMI based on labels, just like we do with container-based workloads. Here we have a service with the selector added and we'll apply it to our cluster. Since our networking has changed, we'll go into the web front end and modify our connection information to point to the new virtual machine that is now running in Red Hat OpenShift. We'll remove the old IP address and replace it with our service name, which was Mongo. Then we'll scale down our web front end and scale it back up for the change to take effect. When the pods come back up, we can test our application again, and when we log in with our user account to look at our previous orders, you can see that they are there and intact. The result is we now have our MongoDB virtual machine and the web front end all running inside OpenShift, and the persistent storage is provided by Portworx Enterprise, giving you all the enterprise capabilities you might need in production, such as disaster recovery, backups, high availability, and automated capacity management. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.